Hey Roboticists, today I'm going to show you how Urban Machine builds digital twins. These are 3D representations of our giant nail ripping robots that we use to develop and to test ahead of time. If you want to see our robots in the real world, check them out in our factory tour video in the description just below that like button. I'm going to show you how we've built eight unique robots over the last three years and deployed them to production and had most of the software working before the parts even arrived in the shop. So let's dive right in. The journey to create a digital twin doesn't begin at the software layer, it actually starts at the hardware design layer. So all of our mechanical team is using Onshape, which is basically CAD software that competes with SolidWorks and Inventor. What they are doing in this is they're building out giant, dimensionally accurate assemblies which show off all the joints, all the positioning of everything, where the cameras are, 3D locations that are interesting to the software team. And what they do then is they use a tool that we've created called Onshape URDF Exporter. This is a open source project. Please feel free to check it out. But basically what this tool does is it hooks into Onshape's APIs and exports the whole thing into a URDF. A URDF is a universal robot description file. Those are perfect for creating digital twins with ROS. Once you have your URDF, you'll get this giant clump of STLs and most importantly, a robot URDF. And this is just a giant XML that describes all of the joints, the positions, the 3D geometry, everything that you care about in order to write software for a robot. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's start out by speed running our system architecture. So to begin with, all of our software runs inside of Docker. For example, all of our ROS nodes are in one Docker container, our database, our visualization, our JavaScript dashboard, etc. Let's deep dive into the ROS nodes. The ROS nodes are roughly architected as a hierarchical control system. So our state machine controls the cluster coordinator, which controls an entire picker cell. At the very bottom, we have actual real hardware. For example, the Big Bird top is a four axis robot arm that can remove real Big Bird nails. Let's look at what a hardware module consists of. Each hardware module is made up of several nodes, the Capcom, which shows off different ROS actions, and it talks to the firmware agent node. It's the only one that's allowed to talk to a PLC. And it also publishes joint positions to a URDF module. So this is how we do the 3D digital twin part of things, is the Capcom is constantly publishing sensor data and joint state data to the URDF modules, which can then reflect that in Arvis. So let's actually show that off. This is a digital twin of our latest generation of nail picking robot. It's running locally on my laptop with every single sensor output being simulated. For example, the cameras on the robot are being simulated using past scans of real production wood. The range finders are being simulated to report locations of wood that doesn't even exist. All the joint positions, all the motors being simulated as well. What this means is we can actually run fake wood through our machine and develop completely locally. I can work from home and run wood through my machine all day testing new features. This is how we're able to build and test all the software for our robots before the hardware has even landed in the shop. So let me actually show you what this looks like. On the right, I have our robot dashboard. You can see that we can click here to start cleaning wood. We can teleop, we can home the robot, etc. I'm gonna teleop. This menu is showing you that we can move the wood forwards and backwards, for example, we can actuate this clamp and that's moving um, the entire left bird surface towards the wood. We can move different axes around as if we were working with real hardware. So for example, I can move this to the right, move it up, move the Z in. And we can also do the same thing for the other bird. Most importantly, we can actually run the entire nail cleaning procedure. I'm gonna click start cleaning wood and we're actually going to run fake wood through the machine. You're gonna see this surface start to clamp. You'll see the different robot gantries picking at fake nails that they find. So let's get started. So I click start cleaning wood, let's zoom in here. And you'll see this camera stream update as fake wood enters the machine. You can see it live. Any green dot, that's machine learning out output saying, hey, I think there's a nail here. And it already found a few nails. These fastener, these little arrows represent locations where nails have been found and the, the robot should pick. Uh, gray means it's currently being targeted. Green means that it needs to be targeted next. Purple means that it already attempted that nail. And you can see that both of the robots are currently operating. The next thing to notice is there's this big gray box here. That represents the location that we think the wood is in and the approximate size and width. And you might have just noticed that it changed shape. That is now the best guess as to the height and width of the wood as it's passing through the system and we're getting more and more information from different sensors. You can also see that we've found six fasteners on that piece of wood and that soon it'll be finished with it. What's really cool is after the wood is run through, we get all kinds of data about it. So if we go back to the dashboard and we click on analytics, we'll be able to see all the data from all the wood that's run through the, this fake machine so far today. So you can see that I've already done a few takes. We've run two planks, uh, one two by eight, that's probably the one that just completed. 
an average fasteners per beater of 2.2. Uh, we can see that we've seen 20 nails and here's all of the different dots. Each dot here is a plank that's run through the machine. So the one right here, this is me recording it around 4.48 p.m. It ran at three centimeters per second on average. Um, it was 1.8 meters long. And if we had run that plank over and over for eight hours, it would have run 900 meters and yielded about 2,000 board feet and sold for about 70 cents a board foot to break even. So our fake wood is not super profitable, but that's okay. We're running on my laptop and it runs super slowly. What's really cool is we have a digital twin for all of our robots. Let me show you the cooker real quick. This is the digital twin of our cooker cell that's currently running in production. The cooker's job is to find nails using computer vision and then cook them using high power induction coils. That superheats the nails up to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit and that burns the wood fibers around the nails or the threads of screws. What that does is it reduces the amount of force required to pull out a nail or a screw from about 500 to 700 pounds down to 20 makes it so much easier to pull them out and so much more reliable to grab screws. Let's run some fake wood through the cooker so we can see how it works in action. Just like the picker, there's a dashboard for the cooker which lets you control it. You have mostly the same options. There's also a components view and this shows you all the different Capcoms that we have access to. We call the coils toasters. Let's start cooking wood. Immediately, it clamps down on the wood and starts scanning. So we'll see the, you know, the live video scanning here. Um, the arrows are green, that means that they need to be cooked. After they're cooked, they turn red. The, um, the big circles here, those represents the induction coils. And you can see as they turn red, that's signifying that it's currently cooking. We spend about four seconds per nail, and then we drop back down. There's also some fancy logic to make sure that, that one cooker's induction field isn't interfering with the other cooker. So we've actually noticed that when you have two coils very close together, they can have interference and cause issues with the power supplies. So we're constantly monitoring the fault status on those pins and moving one coil out of the way of the other when those faults happen. We also simulate those faults so that every once in a while a fault will occur and the simulation has to take care of it. We can see as the wood exits the machine here, we get a defined length and then finally it leaves and the, the clamps open up and are ready for more wood. Once the plank disappears, that's when it gets published to the database and we get all those fancy metrics. Uh, we can see that you know two boards have been processed, 3.6 meters, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much for watching. I barely scratched the surface and all the tech that made it possible to do all this. So if there's anything specific you want me to dive into, just drop it in the comments below. And if there's enough interest, I'll make a video on it. Check out our open source libraries in the description and buy wood at urbanmachine.build. Bye.